there. Welcome to Cartoon Ed Presents. Today we're going to be looking at TOK and more specifically Indigenous Knowledge Systems. So what do you think Indigenous Knowledge could include based on these images? Uh, take a quick pause here for some time to think and reflect. Now, you may be thinking what makes a group Indigenous. One factor could be that they are descended from pre-invasion inhabitants. Can you think of groups that have been in this situation? A second factor might be that they have close ties to the land and cultural and economic practices. Can you think of groups that have, ha have close ties to the land? Thirdly, they could be a group that suffer from economic political disadvantages as a minority. Can you think of groups that have had their land taken away or been forcibly removed from an area by the government? Still not clear? Maybe these terms will help. Indigenous people have native knowledge, meaning they have knowledge that was formulated in a certain area over time and passed down generationally. They also have community knowledge, meaning the stories and facts that bind a local group together. And they also have folk knowledge, which may be presented in things like creation stories or legends that transmit moral truths. Indigenous knowledge has certain characteristics that are common. Firstly, there may be a strong oral tradition where knowledge is communicated through the spoken word and handed down through the family over several generations. Music also plays an important role in festivals and rites of passage. Lastly, much indigenous knowledge is grounded in the idea that all things in the world are connected and interdependent. Let's take a closer look at oral traditions. They can be transmitted as folk tales, jokes, songs, or chants. Another element that features prominently the symbols. A real-life situation or example could be the Ashanti of Ghana. For example, the moon as a symbol represents patience. And also, creatures that live in water but breathe air represent adaptability. Ideas then can be communicated through images instead of oral or written language. A great question to ask is, what practical problems can be solved through applying indigenous knowledge? For many people, indigenous knowledge helps to explain the nature of existence, which may take the forms of creation stories. A knowledge question for this area of knowledge could be, to what extent can explanations in one culture be applied to other cultures? And a real-life situation through which to explore it could be the Chambuli people of Papua New Guinea. The men are passive in this society, and the women are dominant. If we use this knowledge in other cultures, we may conclude that gender roles are constructed. Another KQ would be, to what extent is human perception influenced by language? And we could look at the Himba tribe, who have no words for blue and are unable to distinguish blue from green. What happens when we have no word to describe something? Does it cease to exist? A major consideration when looking at indigenous knowledge systems is the impact of colonization. Colonization was done for several reasons, but here are the three most common. God. When spreading a religion, what happens to the pre-existing religion and what, hap what impact does this have on world culture? Also factored prominently is gold. But re what resources were exploited in order to gain this wealth? And what effect did this have on the environment and indigenous, indigenous way of life? Lastly, glory. Glory usually comes at the cost of oppressing and subjugating others. What did this do to re respected elders of the native lands? Lastly, another consideration that has to be made is the impact of globalization. Many would argue that interdependence is a great thing and can solve many problems. We can connect with each other through technology, transportation, and trade, to name a few. But what if this move towards globalization is Western-led? Can small indigenous groups survive the influx of new cultures and ideas? Should they embrace this or protect their own cultures at all costs? These are just a few things to think about when studying indigenous knowledge systems. I hope this has been helpful. Please like, comment, and share.